as we were sitting here worshipping just a few minutes ago, I thought of the account in Scripture, which is in the Gospel of John, chapter 5. So I'm going to begin in John chapter 5 this evening. Father, come and help us, Lord. Come and help me. Come and help us all, Lord. Father, we desire to dig into your word, Lord, to extract from it, Lord, to take from it all the richness and the fullness which reveals your character as well as reveals our character. So, Father, please, by your spirit, enable me, enable us now, Lord, please. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It's John, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 1. Which After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the chief gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, and whoever set them first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, <coughs> to be made well, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked, and that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. And they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing um, come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Amen. Beautifully read. Thank you very much indeed. And the reason I thought of this in our worship a few minutes ago was this man who was there, he'd been there for 38 years. We don't know how old he was, but he'd been there for 38 years. And he had... He had been endeavouring, trying to be healed from his particular sickness. It displays, the passage displays the compassion, the mercy, the grace of the Lord Jesus, because Jesus came alongside him. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want the Lord Jesus to come alongside people. In those days with this man, it was physically. In our days, it's by his spirit. We want the Lord Jesus to come and meet people. Because everybody who is in need of a saviour, everybody who is in need of salvation, is actually sick. They are sin sick. Those of us who are born again by the Spirit of God, hallelujah, we don't have that sickness anymore. That has been removed. We are not perfect, but we are in relationship with the Father because of Jesus. Because at some point in our lives, those of us who are Christians, born again, the Lord Jesus met with us. He met with us along the way, we might say. And in the same way, the Lord Jesus met this man. He came alongside him when this man was in a particularly needy situation. And do you know what? People who are not Christians, they are in a different way, but they are equally in a needy position. They need something to happen to them. Some people realise that and understand that, but many don't. But may the Lord direct us to those who know their need 
for something to happen in their lives because they are sick physically maybe yes there is a lot of sickness around but spiritually they are sick their souls are sick their very beings they are sick because they are in need of something to happen to them to cure them of their sickness in the same way that this man here he was very needy the Lord Jesus came alongside him Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time Jesus was God he is God all the fruit of the Spirit about which we read in Galatians chapter 5 all the giftings of the Spirit the fullness of the Spirit we read about in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, Romans 12 Ephesians I think 4 it is all the gifts of the Spirit he had them all because he was God so he knew all about this man and as we go about our lives as evangelists well you you're going to say to me hang on Charlie I'm not an evangelist and I will say to you okay but you are a witness you may or may not have the gifting of evangelism but if you are a Christian you are a witness an ambassador of Jesus so as you go about in your evangelizing or witnessing meeting people and we meet a lot of people don't we day by day you may not know much about somebody you may know nothing at all about somebody but there is one greater than you and me who knows everything about that person the Lord Jesus knows that person the Lord Jesus loves that person and the Lord Jesus died for that person and the Lord Jesus wants that person to be healed to be made well so you may not know what it is that that, that that person's history you may not know that person's circumstances you probably won't if that person is a stranger but the Lord Jesus knows it all so as we go about how about if we pray well not how about if we pray we must pray <laughs> but when we pray why don't we pray Lord as I leave my house as I leave my flat today as I leave as I'm as I leave school at 3:30, 3 o'clock 4 o'clock as I leave college to walk out into the world please lead me to somebody who needs to be healed it happened to me about six weeks ago and I made a short video about it on YouTube before I left home I prayed that the Lord would give me an opportunity to witness to somebody to speak to somebody about the Lord Jesus and I went up I th did I have the our, our family dog with us or did I not I can't remember I don't think I did and I went up to Broomhill Woods up Sherrington Road off Norwich Road up to the wooded area and I sat on a bench and I was praying reading my Bible and praying and after a time a man came along an elderly man well older than me so he was elderly I'm elderly but he was more so and he came and sat down beside me and he was clearly lonely and he talked about certain things I will keep it very confidential because he talked on a personal level uh, but he had noticed that I was reading my Bible and he had noticed that I was wearing a t-shirt with Jesus on but we talked about this and we talked about that he was lonely and in the end the conversation just came round to talking about the real issues of life and I was able to share with him I was able to give him a good news newspaper which is full of 
good news. That's why it's called the good news newspaper. And he went on his way. He told me his name. I won't tell you because it's confidential. But I prayed and the Lord answered my prayer. I knew nothing about the man. He shared some circumstances with me and then he went on his way. But let's pray, hey, but when we go out, let's pray like that. Lord, give me, please, someone to talk to. Because you are the one who knows where everybody is. You know where everybody's movements because you are God and you know everything. You are omniscient. You just know everything. Wow. So Jesus knew that this man had been there in that condition a long time, which is an understatement. 38 years. Do you want to be made well? Well, that's a question, isn't it? The Lord Jesus knew that he had this um, debilitating disease. He wasn't able to get to the water in time. The Lord Jesus knew that because he's God. So what a question. Do you want to be made well? Well, that's a good question which we could ask people as we meet them day by day, wherever. Do you want to be made well? And they'll say to you, what, what do you mean? And you can say, well, there is one I know who can, I'm a Christian, and there is someone who can make you well. The person might say, well, I am well. I'm strong and I haven't got any illnesses. And you're, you are already into a conversation in a non-threatening way. And you can say, well, there's one who can heal your soul. There's one who can forgive you. And then the conversation may go on or it may not, depending upon the person. But do you want to be made well? That's a good, open-ended type of question. It's an open question. The Lord Jesus didn't say to him, do you want to be healed? He didn't say that. He said, do you want to be made well? Give it a go. Try. Pray first that the Lord will lead you to somebody with whom you can share Jesus. And the Lord will give you the boldness to say to somebody at some point, do you want to be made well? Much better to ask that question than to talk about the weather or football or politics or the state of the nation. All of which might be interesting, but the crux of the matter is that people need to be made well. And there is a physical healing, and there is an emotional healing, a spiritual healing, and that's really what people want. Because our physical bodies, well, I would like to be able to run as fast now as I did when I was 25, and to be as strong now as I was when I was 25. But it ain't gonna happen. One day I will have a new body, and then, well, who knows? But for the moment, physically, this is me. But I'll tell you what, spiritually, I have advanced since I became a Christian, all those years ago. Not when I was 25, I was older than that. It's the physical side of us, the emotional side of us, that our very souls, our very beings, that are much more important than what we look like. How tall we are, how short we are, how thin we are, how not so thin we are, colour of our eyes, whatever. It doesn't really matter, the physical side of things. Honestly, I've been there and I've done that. What matters is being made well. And it's only the Lord Jesus who can do that. Only the Lord Jesus who can do that. And the sick man, verse 7, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. This tells us something else. This tells us that this man was trying to attain the unattainable. He was trying to reach the unreachable, physically. 
because of his condition, he was not able to get there in time to the waters. So he was a loser, he lost out. Time after time after time. In his own strength, whatever that was, and I think we can assume that he didn't have much strength, in his own ability, and again, I think we can assume that he didn't have much ability because of his illness, sickness, because of his lack of strength in his own way, he was unable. He was trying to do the impossible because there was always somebody getting there before him. So he was stuck. It's a picture of, I'm going to suggest to you, it's a picture of people who need to be made well and they try in their own strength, they try according to their own ability to actually reach God. But they won't in their own way, they won't in their own strength. They will not achieve that in their own willpower. They will not achieve that according to their own so-called good works. This is what the Bible teaches, isn't it? Jesus came alongside this man and Jesus did instantly what this man had been trying to do for 38 years. Hallelujah, what a saviour, the Lord Jesus. He had compassion for this man. He saw that he'd been there for all those years and had been trying and trying and trying. And the Lord Jesus, just like that, achieved in an instant what this man could not achieve. And that tells us, doesn't it, that it's only Jesus, through Jesus, by Jesus, in Jesus, that people can achieve, they can attain what they are, have been trying to obtain by their own resources. For example, going to church. Nothing wrong with going to church. Let me say that. It's good to go to church. But simply going to church, no, that's not good enough. Simply by holding a position in the church, a role, a title, no, not good enough, won't get you into relationship with God, won't get the person forgiven. By joining various organisations, I'm just going to choose one and I mean no disrespect, but maybe the Rotary, or the Round Table, or the this, or the that, to engage in charitable works. Yes, it's good to be charitable and to do charitable works, it's good. But it's bypassing Jesus and you cannot bypass Jesus. You can't take the long way round and avoid Jesus and you can't take a shortcut and avoid Jesus. It's all about Jesus as we see in this account here of what happened. So people using their own ability, using their own willpower, using their own resources, using their own intelligence, looking all over the place for help. And in this case, there was no one to help this man. He was on his own. People will not be made well. It's really as simple as that, isn't it? And I'm sure we know that. But this is a good account. It's, it's, it's a good, I almost say the word story, but that makes it sound like it's a made-up story, like a fairy tale or something that's not true. Let me tell you a story, some people say, but it's, this is not a story, this is a, a true account. So this is a good, true account to talk to people about, because it shows, as I have said, that this man, on his own, needed to be made well. That was the question Jesus asked, asked him, and his answer 
although it wasn't a simple yes or no, in effect the man said yes, because he was explaining that he had no one to put him into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while he is coming, another, someone else, steps down before him. And that's what people are doing, they're, they're trying, they are trying, they are trying. Not everybody, because some people foolishly, and that's a word that's used in the Bible, the fool says in his own heart there is no God. So I take that biblically that some people foolishly just reject God, there is no God, this is all there is. Well, the Bible talks about such people. But there are many, many people. You won't hear this talked about in the, on the mainstream media, on the BBC, ITV, Sky TV. No, in the, in the major newspapers online or actually in paper, they don't talk about God and, and the need for a saviour. But there are people who are still looking. There are people who are needy and boy, they need a saviour. And we know that, in the same way that the only way that this man here at the pool of Bethesda, the only way possible for him to be made well was by the intervention of the Lord Jesus. In the same way exactly, people today in 2024 and throughout all the ages, the only way they can be made well they can have their souls made whole, they can, they can get right with God. The only way is by the intervention of Jesus. He did that 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. We know that, don't we? We read, we read that in scripture. So if anybody says to you in, in a conversation, well, what's Jesus ever done for you? Some people are genuine when they ask that, they want to hear. Other people say, well, what? What's Jesus done for you then? They want a bit of an argument. Well, we don't really argue as Christians, we simply talk about Jesus. And the answer to that question, or a question like it, is, well, actually, he gave his life for me. He died for me. And he died for you. Do you want to be made well? A great question. A great question. Do you want to be made well? It goes on, Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath, it's not lawful for you to carry your bed. And then a little bit further down, it says, the man departed and told the Jews, that it was Jesus who had made him well. When we see in scripture the, the phrase, the two words, the Jews, then we can very safely assume that these are the Jews, the clergy of the day, the, the hierarchy, those religious Jews in the positions of authority, maybe on the Sanhedrin, Sadducees and Pharisees, and maybe the Jews in, encapsulates scribes and teachers of the law, the lawyers, the priests. And by and large, these were the people who rejected Jesus. So that is a bit of code, almost, when we see the Jews in the Bible. Very, very, very often it refers to those people who rejected the divinity of Jesus and they called him a blasphemer and they called for his death. I'm glad they did call for his death, you know, but I'm not glad they called him a blasphemer. I'm not glad that they rejected his divinity, but I am glad that they called for his death. And when the time came, when, Pilate, when Jesus was in front of Pilate, and Pilate said to the crowd, as was the custom, I will release one man to you, Barabbas, or Jesus, they wanted Jesus crucified. And Bab Barabbas released to be free. Barabbas was guilty, Jesus was innocent, but nonetheless, the people wanted Jesus, the innocent Jesus, to be crucified. So that's why I'm glad that actually the Jewish hierarchy 
called for the death of Jesus because if Jesus hadn't died I wouldn't be here today that's a bit of a silly statement because of course Jesus had to die because it was within it was the will of the Father the Father in heaven sent his son Jesus to the earth so that all who trust in him in that death on the cross should not perish but should gain life and have everlasting life. We know that's what scripture tells us. So that's a quick look through John chapter 5 verses 1 through to verse 15. And I wasn't intending to talk about that today, but praise God I have. Because as we were worshipping, as I've said, this came to me. I can't remember quite in who said what or what the song was, but it doesn't matter. When, God's put, when God puts something on our hearts, even at short notice, at the 11th hour, we must respond. We must respond. And let's respond now, shall we, by dedicating ourselves to the man, the God, Jesus Christ, who did what only Jesus could do, to die on the cross for the sin of mankind, to die in our place, to be punished in our place, to rise from the dead by the power of the Spirit, so that we can be forgiven people. We can be holy people, and that was what I was going to be talking about today, but maybe in another time we can come on to that. So let's dedicate, shall we? Can we? Do you want to? I'm springing this on you, if you like. I'm suddenly introduced this. But do you know what? As I was in sitting over there during the worship or standing, the Lord sprung this message on me. And I'm responding to the call of God. And when we hear the call of God, when we hear that God wants us to do something, and God does want us to do something, we don't literally just sit in the pews as we are today, we must respond. We must respond to the one, the only one, who can make people well, who can cure the sickness of the human heart. Because the, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. The heart is sick and deceitfully wicked above all else, and who can understand it, or, or what is the cure, it says in Jeremiah 17. I think it's Jeremiah 17. It's in Jeremiah somewhere. The human, the human heart, the unregenerated, the unforgiven human heart is sick. And it needs to be healed. So shall we respond, as I pray, to our Father in heaven? Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and we, we, we lift up the name of Jesus, the Saviour, the creator, the sustainer, the one through whom and by whom all things were made, the one who sustains the world, we read in Colossians, the one who is the saviour of the world, the rescuer, the redeemer. Father, we now, either for the first time or for the second or third times, we dedicate our lives to Jesus. And Father, help us, Lord, as we go our, live our lives here and there, Lord, help us that, to pray before we go out. Lord, help us to pray and ask you, by your Spirit, to lead us to someone whom you know needs to be made well. Just as we see the Lord Jesus went to this man and he knew all about him. Father, by your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Father, please help us to pray those sort of prayers. Lead me to someone who needs to be made well, who needs to know about Jesus. And Father, as we then leave our home, flat, or wherever we are having prayed, Father, please give us that, that drive, Lord, that is irrepressible desire, that unction of the Spirit, Lord, to say to somebody whom you put across our path, do you want to be made well? 
And Father, give us the words to say. Because Father, we want to, to speak loud and proudly about the Lord Jesus. Because we see what wonderful things he did when we read our holy scriptures. We stand in awe. We are excited about this man Jesus, the God who came alongside people and he made the difference in their lives. And Lord God, we do want the Lord Jesus to make the difference in the lives of other people today in the year 2024 and Lord for however long we have left on this earth. So Father now Lord as we are in this church building Father come by your spirit Lord and deal with us and speak to us. Lord sort us out please. Sort me out Lord speak to me Lord I need you as much as everybody else if not more. Oh Father thank you that we have your precious word to read and to read and to read yet again. Lord, and as we read it, it is alive, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's inspired by you, Father. That's why it is so wonderful. And that is why, Lord, we acknowledge that we can read the same passage of Scripture over and over again, and Lord, you speak to us through your word. Oh, what a book this is. What a book of books this is, Lord. Inspired, God-breathed. And we thank you, Lord, that you made this, you caused this book to be written over all those ages, ages ago. And it is absolutely, Lord, we declare and affirm, acknowledge that it is as relevant today as it was when it was written all those years ago. So, Father, we praise you, thank you, glorify you. We thank you, Jesus, praise you, and seek to glorify your name in our daily lives. Come and help us to do this, please. We pray this, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen.